What's happening guys? We're back and I hope you are all safe and enjoying your holiday season. We're nearing the end of 2020 and it's time to reflect back on the year and all that we've experienced since last January. Okay, maybe not everything. It's been a rough year. But maybe we can just look at what 2020 brought to the world of League of Legends. It's a little bit more manageable. Still some unpleasantness, but uh... This year saw some pretty big changes to the Rift. We were introduced to six entirely new champions. Set, Lilia, Yone, Samira, Seraphine, and Rel. Riot added over 120 new skins, a lot of which were incredibly well designed and gave new life to champions that felt somewhat overlooked. There were new items added to the game, as well as new artwork for items that have existed for years. And in addition to the six new champions added to the game, two older characters were given complete visual and gameplay updates, Fiddlesticks and Volibear. These two VGUs were, in my opinion, incredibly successful. They threw a new light onto two champions that I had ignored purely because of how uninteresting their visual designs were, and I'm sure that they had the same effect on many other players as well. It feels really good when a game as old as League of Legends puts the time and effort into keeping their game up to date. 2009 was a long time ago, and while I may have forgiven Riot back in the day for their, um, unique art direction, I just don't think any artist, game developer, or producer would feel proud to have a virtual experience that looks like this in 2020. Tastes change, perspectives change, technology changes, and at the end of the day, if your decade-old game still looks the way it did on launch, it tells your audience that you really don't care about them or your game. I know, I know, tell that to TF2, right? But my point is, part of the reason I like League so much is because they go that extra mile for the sake of artistic integrity. It's honestly inspiring to me as an artist. It gets me excited about exploring concepts and marrying those concepts with clear gameplay mechanics to create something that not only caters to casual fans of the game, like myself, but to pros and veterans that have been playing for years. But as excited as these VGUs make me, it brings me right back down when I browse through League's roster and see the handful of champions that never received that kind of care and attention. Characters like Alistar, Caitlyn, Cassidy, Cho'Gath, Misfortune, they all just got left in the early 2010s and no one came back to rescue them. I understand that this might not be a unanimous perspective, but look, this channel's name is Subjectively. It goes without saying that everything we're talking about here is based in opinion. But I would say that most of you, whether if you're a fan of the game or not, would agree with me when I say that of these neglected, decade-old champions, the one that needs a redesign more than any of them is the rabble rouser, Gragas. I'll drink you under the table, scrub. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Before I made this video, I didn't really know a lot about Gragas. I didn't really want to know. Absolutely nothing about his design intrigued me. He looks like if an NPC from Morrowind was rendered in the original World of Warcraft engine. Like, I'm not saying that a low-poly 3D model doesn't have appeal, but it was hard for me to believe that this character and this character existed in the same game. There's nothing wrong with the big fat guy chugging along the rift, either. I'd like to see more diversity in body types overall in this and every game. But this is not the body of a human. No living human has ever or will ever look like this. It's not empowering people with this shape, it's clearly poking fun at the trope of a fat, gross drunk. On top of how he looks visually, his behavior, characterization, and voice acting are all so crude and grotesque that it actually makes it difficult for me to play him. His W ability is a key part of his kit. You have to use it pretty frequently as you clear jungle camps as well as in fights. But every time you use it, this nauseating burp sound effect plays. I understand that gross out characters exist and that there is a time and a place for a design like this but it just felt so out of place in modern League of Legends world. Literally no other character in the game behaves like this. There's an actual talking plague rat that shoots sewer runoff who has more decency than this man. And let's just say for a minute that Riot did want to keep this uncouth, grotesque characterization for Gragas. Okay, maybe it's important for his story. Let's take a little peek at the official lore for him, shall we? After all, modern League characters take into consideration their backstory just as much as their gameplay when it comes to design. All right then. Oh, well, that's kind of brief. Most of the other champions get like two pages of writing dedicated to their lore, but okay. Uh, the only thing more important to Gragas than fighting is drinking. Oh, uh, okay, so he's just a mindless, violent drunk. Not very captivating, but at least the unpleasant burping makes more sense now. He has an internal love for good drink, but his massive constitution prevented him from reaching divine states of intoxication. Oh, so he can't get drunk. He's actually so big that he can't get completely slizzed, okay. 
Uh, all right. Looks like he wants to try to make his own brew. Something potent enough to get him drunk, all right. He goes to the frail yard. That's like Sweden and Russia and the North Pole had a baby. And he finds a... Wait, what? A flawless shard of ice. Not only did this unmelting shard imbue his lager with incredible properties, but it also kept the mixture chilled at perfect serving temperature? All right, is this a League of Legends character or a two minute long Coors Super Bowl commercial? The newest champion was unwillingly fed the magical essence of her dead friends by an evil cult and her mother, but Graggy is just out here looking for something to keep his drink cold. Actually, honestly, the ice shard idea is kind of cool, but where in his design is there any indication that this man is in possession of an ancient magical crystal? All right, let's, let's just keep going here. Uh, Gragas stumbled upon some peace negotiation between two warring Freljord tribes. Ash was there. Okay, so we are still in Runeterra. That's good to know. He offered them a drink, uh, then, uh, then attacked them. Uh, and then they stopped and drank the magical ice drink and were happy. But Gragas still wasn't drunk enough, so he left to find stuff to make him more drunk. All right, I think we found the root of this character's problem. He's got one of the most rushed, poorly thought out, and uninteresting backstories in the game. In our past League of Legends character redesign videos, I've always been shocked to find out that the character we're fixing has a story behind them that's actually way more compelling than their design implies. But in Gragas' case, what you see is what you get. And yet, there are elements of his story that seem incredibly inconsistent. He's a drunken oaf, yet he's got a knack for chemistry and an impeccable palate. He's jolly and diplomatic, but also violent and impulsive. His main character motivation is to get drunk, but his defining character trait is that he's already too drunk to function like a normal human being. <sighs> you know, in all honesty, I feel like there's something there. Something we could turn into a real character design. But it's gonna take some work, and we might have to change some things on a much bigger scale than we have in our previous videos. I'm gonna need some help with this, so please join me in welcoming Subjectively Jane and Subjectively Claire, my fellow character designers, into this video. Hello, Subjectivists, <laughs> and uh, anyone else, I guess. Yeah. If you're, actually, if you're not a Subjectivist, Subscribe. just click that X. Get out of here. We no, don't want you here. No. Sub <laughs> don't, don't, don't click away. Click subscribe. I mean, support this video. <laughs> no, no, just subscribe or just enjoy the like you could like it. Well, anyway, guys, it's a lot of fun to talk about what we don't like. I think that's sort of how we've made a name for ourselves with this channel. But I think let's give him a chance here. Let's just. I want to like him. I, I, I tried. I want, to there, like him there's a I way, think. right? Like, what about yes, Gragas do we find appealing right now? Is He's there not anything? A person. He's not. <laughs> I don't want to be mean, but the way they have designed this character, the lines, like the voice lines, it, the, he doesn't have a personality. It's not anyone I could envision ever meeting. Like, he doesn't look like a person. <laughs> it's not him physically. It's but like, when I look at this 3D I model, agree. this poor guy has absolutely no respect. He has no love or care. <laughs> no one will ever love this poor <laughs> bastard. So were we trying to talk about what we liked about him? <laughs> we, what do we like about him? Let's just pull, bullet point Just bullet, bullet point, okay. I like his beard. I like characters with big beards. His beard's fine. I think his hair is honestly even fine. His tattoos have no significance. The ropes have no significance. Not even his beard has any significance. It could, they could. All of those things could have significance. Could you imagine how terrifying don't. he'd be if it were just all that belly and no beard though? Oh, oh you've have you seen that picture? <laughs> <laughs> Like you see, there you go. Don't you oh. like his beard a lot more? Don't you have more appreciation for his beard now? I appreciate it as a barrier between me and him. Oh, this is hard because on the one hand, I don't like it, but on the other hand, I want to keep it. His belly. I like the belly. I don't like the belly the way it is now. Should we move on to lore? All right, That'll take so us a while. we spent a good 10 minutes <laughs> reading up on all of the official lore. For all that belly, not a lot of lore. No, he's... And it's confusing too. There's so little, but it doesn't give me a concise idea of who this person is. He is so fat that he can't get drunk. 
He has such an enormous constitution. Yes, his, his weight is actually, and his size is actually an important part of his motivation as a character. Because he can't get drunk, can't and that's get all drunk. he wants. Because he's not just a connoisseur, he loves to party, but actually he parties too hard, and he gets in all these fights. But he's never been drunk But enough. he hasn't been drunk, so they're not actually drunken brawls. He just fights. I, I think he gets... But buzzed, but he, th I think the words they used was divine level of intoxication. So I think he like wants to see God. Like, I think <laughs> this dude wants to get, he wants to get so, seriously so hammered that he might not wake up. I think that's what he wants. That's <laughs> sad, Gragas. I, I mean, there's that, a lot of it. stuff. I Here's the thing about his lore. I, I, I think we can tweak it. I don't know if there are any yeah. diehard Gragas fans out there that are gonna be like, what the hell? Gragas looks like this because his lore is like his lore is six paragraphs, guys. Yeah, like it, I think that we're going to be tweaking a little bit. There are there, some there are some interesting things. This true ice shard right. that he discovers. So after you, we've introduced oh, he finds that he yeah. yeah so I know you would search. never know that he has an ice shard, not in his design <laughs> at all. I think the least the one thing I want to keep is that he does have this ice shard that he discovers that adds a specific kind of potent quality to his brew and also keeps it cold forever. He's because, in the Freljord now. Right, I think as, as, as far as we're concerned, he is in the Freljord now. I think right now the only thing that reads Freljord to me is his tattoos. The Freljordian characters seem to all have tattoos. Like Braum has kind of similar looking tattoos. Again, that's like Gragas' biggest problem is just nothing about him seems clear or concrete or thought out. I really, I don't know what his personality even is. Like if I walked in to a bar and he's there and maybe he hasn't started attacking people. Is he nice? Is he like, does he care about fine liquor? Does he, is he an artisan or is he just like mean? And is he gonna burp on me? I. Yeah, that that is true because they make him sound like he's got really refined taste and he's, he's kind like of- He's thoughtful Yeah, he's, he's got this sort of artistic side to him, this creative side to him. And then also he likes to get into bar fights and he, in game, he like burps. And... Oh my God, his sound design is some of the worst sound design yeah, he burps. of any character. Like if you play him, you will have to hear him burping if over and over If anyone in your game again. plays him, it's, it's relentless. I guess we can start talking about the ideas that we have so far and sort of where we took what we have right now and sort of shaped it into maybe something a little bit more um, charismatic, a little bit more enjoyable, compelling, or just exciting. I was thinking about Bacchus and the Dionysus, and they're the gods of mirth and alcohol and drunkenness and partying. partying. I thought that would be a good place to start to get a little more concrete inspiration. And I found a couple cool pictures of Bacchus and Dionysus separately, like, riding tigers and panthers and lions around or being pulled by a chariot that's being pulled by tigers and i was like okay that's really specific but smite did exactly that already which um, is another moba yeah it has it's based off of deities from different right myths and religions uh bacchus is in that game and he basically looks like gragas but in a chariot pulled want to by see a what tiger he looks like. well the most specific thing i found that felt like it would fit maybe, um, was just that he had this like animal mount, but I didn't want it to actually be like a cat because one smite has done that already, but also I thought it would be kind of confusing to have a character like Nidalee in the game and also have this other character mm -hmm. with a big cat. And then I was thinking about St. Bernard's and how they have those big- um, Oh yeah, like, that's a good idea keg collars and that's a good mm -hmm. way to like humanize a character if they have this big droopy slobbery like dog. dog right um but that also didn't really feel right so then i was just looking at freljord lore in general and i found these things called bale striders which are these giant really just like tall lanky corrupted magic monsters that live in the freljord and they just have like gnarled up arm-like skin that's really crazy looking. Also, anyone who encounters them is corrupted. So I was thinking, Gragas is looking for the perfect brew or whatever. He wanders into the Freljord and he finds a Bale Strider. What if that magic corrupts him and becomes something a little more specific? 
And then if he found like a baby, I could still have that like St. Bernard keg imagery. I think this is a cool design. I think this is definitely a more interesting and compelling story to go with. More Freligordian Freli elements, for sure. You're saying like he starts off on this quest that he wants to find good booze, but then he sort of ends up with this creature that without him knowing is slowly turning it's into something him. less and less human. Yeah, so he has this companion, but also he's becoming more and more monstrous himself. And I thought that could also help illustrate a different play style that's more uh, magic-y and potentially bursty because I really do think his current design fails to communicate any kind of magic. I guess that, well, that was actually another thing that I like about him that I didn't say before, but I like that he plays like an assassin even though he is not what you would think an assassin would look like. like normally, <laughs> like in this but, game know. especially, like the assassins are very slim, they're very uh, either muscular or they're like like animalistic, like they're hunched over, they have sharp blades, you know, they're very nimble looking, they're very stealthy, and Greg is, is lumbering around and he's burping and he's yelling and he jumps around and shit, but still his play style is that of an assassin. He jumps in, he does a shit ton of damage, and then he jumps out. I kind of like that and I want to preserve that a little bit, and I think that what you have here gives us a sort of more comprehensive design that implies that kind of behavior and that sort of play style. Because instead of being like a little assassin that runs in and stabs you in a vital organ and you're dead, I think of Gragas as more of like a very, uh, a very particular like demolitions expert. Yeah, so I did three different ideas. Two were sort of warm ups, and then the last one I actually really liked. I was definitely focusing more on his magic capabilities because he is an AP character and I feel like there's a way that we could emphasize that a little bit more. And I also really wanted to integrate his true ice crystal um, in a more obvious way into his design. Um, so the first two I was just sort of playing with kind of what he already looked like but maybe just changing up his design a little bit more just getting a feel for it. And then in the third design I liked the in my first design I um, had a face with facial hair and eyebrows it kind of reminded me of an owl and um, I was like I, I don't know why but I like that um, so I want to make him a little bit more owl like because um, they have this sort of like vacant stare that at the same time could be like oh this person doesn't know what they're doing but at the same time it's like oh shit are they figuring mm -hmm. out how to kill me right now so it's got like a natural connection that's not really positive or negative it's just kind of like mysterious yeah it's 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 uh ambiguous and it's ominous but basically as i was creating this design i sort of made up this story in my mind of similar it starts off a similar way as gragas where he's sort of this party animal maybe in his youth he liked getting turned with all of his buddies but because he was huge he doesn't get turned the way the rest of his friends do so he's like, <laughs> like how you're saying this <laughs> yeah he doesn't get absolutely plastered like the rest of his college buddies so he went to college yeah he, i don't know if they have college in runeterra i don't know but anyway so he has this sort of social um barrier between him and his friends where he feels like he can't really connect with them unless he's drunk because they only really connect when they're drunk and so he's like, oh shit, I need to get drunk. So uh, I need to get turned. I need to get turned. So over the years, he kind of spends his time developing more brews, developing different things to get him drunk. None of it works. So eventually he finds himself in the Freljord. And he, at this point, years have passed and he's kind of stopped talking to people altogether. And he is just obsessed with finding this one thing that will get him what he wants, which is the social interactions that he saw his friends having. So he finds the true ice shard somewhere out in the frail yard. Maybe he's like on the brink of death. Like, you know, he's traveling through the wilderness. He's not taking care of himself. He mm -hmm. finds this true ice shard. He, I don't know, mixes it. He puts it in his cask or whatever, takes a sip out of it. And all of a sudden it sort of becomes part of him. He's like, oh my God, I've been reborn. But it's, it corrupts him, sort of like with, with your character in the, the Bale Strider. You know, it, it, it corrupts him, it turns him into something else. And it's still not enough. It's still, it, it leaves him even thirstier than before. And he's a little hostile, you know, you don't really want to approach him, you don't know how he's going to react. And he's got this magic flowing through him from this ice. 
and he like you know he can slam the barrel down with the ice inside it and it makes this huge explosion of ice crystals everywhere and freezes on and yeah that's sort of where i was going with that i like that the way his kit works the projectiles of like throwing right now he throws a bunch of barrels endlessly at the enemy team i like that he's throwing an ice thing like yeah. a spell <laughs> so yeah like, i would like him to have something rechargeable that makes sense that he could throw over and over again so instead of actually throwing a barrel he will produce like a big kind of snowball but it's sort of maybe keep it purpley and like this icy purple kind of black frost skins but yeah that's sort of the the basic gist of what i wanted to change about him I just, so i really I, I have this stuff. last very quick idea that i haven't even been able to like draw or right. even think that much about but i'm just I'm envisioning this like really fun ultimate ability okay <laughs> so banking off of his original storyline where all he fucking cares about for some reason is alcohol okay i'm picturing this very you know jolly lumbering man with a little bar cart being dragged behind him okay you know with his maybe his ice shard is on there and you know yeah. some he mixes drinks and he's just got a he's little just chemistry set he's back there ice. he's got his i really ice. like i can i can see a fun game mechanic where like maybe he throws this bar cart or jumps on top of it and it like does the same projectile as like lilia's uh oh and it just keeps rolling it just keeps rolling until it like crashes into <laughs> someone and then they get drunk and like maybe they're like stunned or something. Or something. <laughs> I like that. Oh, it's I like a Nexus so, like, blip when like, you get in the car in Nexus blip. And they run towards him. I don't know. Oh, they get wasted. They charmed. And they get I like that. Whoever's near it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that they get charmed. They oh. all just fall in love with each other. Yeah. Oh, if it hits two uh, enemies and then they, they start walking towards each other. They charm each and other. Then they kiss. <laughs> and they kiss. It's, I like that idea a lot because it, it it is again what we're talking about where he's an assassin but he's not a subtle it's assassin. He's he's an assassin in so much as that he will charge into you and blow up everything around you and But I'm picturing he's a little pushy. Fred somewhere between all of our sketches whether it's because he's a human being corrupted by the Freljord magic or the true ice shard or whatever it is, I feel like no matter what, he's like a hair trigger away from either like a real belly laugh, having fun with you, or just stepping on you when you're dead. Oh, I wish. Like there's, you know, there's a camera zoom and then a single oh, yeah, violin like, note yeah, like, while they zoom in. Then he like laughs out loud or he kills you, you know? Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, a I hair like trigger. That's his character. I think that's a good, yeah. Like he can, he can either erupt in, in in happiness or erupt in fury but either way this man will erupt mm -hmm. all over you oh no and in a good, <laughs> in a good way and in, in a not in a well not always in a good way but never in the way that i made it sound. <laughs> and, basically we want to end up with this do we want him to be intense he's not really aware of the fact that he's killing others, he's just like, hey, <laughs> he's not aware of the I am so that he's destructive and happy that. Well, wow, he's wow, not, you know. I'm so turnt right now. But he's not, and they're like, and they're like, Gragas, you're not, you're not drunk. You're you, not turnt, Gragas. <laughs> are you making fun of me now? No, no. Am I no. on the hot seat? Fine. Okay. What? He's slizzed. He's canned. He's 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 what? He's I don't. Exploding all over it's you. It's exploding all over you. <laughs> what what a cool kid say to get drunk. Okay. Let's uh, let's move on. What we'll say at this point is that we got a little bit more work to do because we're gonna sort of combine the ideas that we have now and sort of unify them into one design. And uh, we want something that's a little bit feral, uh, a little bit you know spontaneous. Maybe a little bit sad, um, a little bit of a corruption element where he's got this sort of ice shard that maybe manifests in the form of an actual crystal. Maybe it's embedded in his body. Maybe it's embedded in a little buddy that he has that runs alongside him. And I definitely want to take something with this alt where he charges down and maybe carries at least one other player with him, um, <laughs> like the, the car in Nexus Blitz. All right, our freeform concept workshopping was almost as chaotic as Gragas' backstory, but we came out of it with some solid ideas. Our keywords for the new design were feral, spontaneous, lost, slash corrupted, and we wanted him to feel more like a magic user and incorporate some sort of long distant ultimate ability that would allow him to crash into the enemy with one or more of his teammates alongside him. Working off of the silhouettes of one of my first three designs, I incorporated Claire's corrupted Bale Strider concept. I wanted the design to imply that this ice shard he found possessed more qualities than just making his drink cold. The crystal's magic was working its way into Gragas' body, transforming him from the inside out. 
The longer he spent with the crystal, consuming the liquor imbued with its power, the more and more of him was lost. Clear's idea of illustrating this concept through the use of overlapping, jagged black vines worked well with a lot of the existing imagery already used in the Freljord characters. It also contributed much more to our goal of making him look like a mage. With this magic coursing through his body, the strange white tattoos in his original design finally had some significance, so I kept them in order to keep him recognizable as the Gragas that players have known for years. For Jane's idea of an ult that he could charge into battle with, I simplified the mechanic into something like Tom Kench's ult, where he grabs an ally and travels some distance with them. In Gragas's case though, I imagine him rolling an ally along in his keg, riding in a straight line until he collides with an enemy or a wall to result in a huge explosion that knocks all players back. This might need tweaking from a gameplay perspective, but we don't usually go too far into changing the mechanics with these videos. When I got to colors, I wanted to use most of his original palette, particularly his bright orange beard. Now that he's wearing more clothes, we had to be a little bit more subtle with the colors. The saturated teal of his loincloth would be too overwhelming if we used it for his now heavy and oversized robe. With a slightly more purple tinge that played off of the secondary lighting of his cursed arm and glowing barrel, we were able to retain Gragas' iconic purple colors that longtime players are used to seeing when they use his abilities. With the purple, I mixed in some icy blue to allude to the true ice shard as well as his connection to the Freljord. He's not originally from this region, so it made sense that the icy influence of the land became a part of him, rather than being a part of his origin. I even iced the beard around his mouth, as if his last drink still lingers on his lips, frozen by the frigid air of the north. In the end, we had something that paid tribute to the original Gragas, but was altogether something a bit more unique. This was the modified lore that we had developed for this new, more modern Gragas. The fabled and ancient wilds of the Freljord harbor many myths, tales of impossibly large monstrosities and tribes of warring half-men. One so bold as to seek truth in these legends may find them to be more fact than fiction. And of these tantalizing mysteries, none are quite as captivating or as tragic than that of Gragas, bearer of the true ice. The wandering hermit known by many names over the years has been documented all throughout Freljord history, and exactly how old the man is or for how long he has been wandering the frozen wastelands of the north is hard to know for sure. Some who take pride in the legend see the man as a sort of deity of the land, and insist that he was born in the Freljord. Others claim that Gragas was once a mortal man, traveling from afar on a quest that led him to his ultimate demise. The story goes that Gragas, in his youth, was a fun-loving and sociable young man. Scholarly, and with a passion for uncovering the mysteries of Runeterra's many intricate magics, he was often the center of attention at group gatherings. His enormous personality was rivaled only by his physical stature, and they say that even as a boy, Gragas stood well over six feet tall and weighed more than a small bear. It took many years for the young man to realize that his size had more than a few drawbacks. He became aware of hushed giggles and jeering remarks from his peers as he passed by. People would scatter at his presence and heckle in his wake, and what he had once thought to be throngs of adoring fans would turn out to be to him as crowded spectators are to some exotic, caged animal. He also found himself alienated from his few true friends, for in the nature of youth, they would often indulge in intoxicating liquors that seemed to have no effect on Gragas due to his considerable body mass. After some time, these social burdens took their toll on the young man. He began losing interest in his studies and became more and more secluded. Even those closest to him found him distant and unemotional. One night, in an attempt to lift Gragas' spirits, a few of his friends sought to surprise him with a gathering of his loved ones. They waited in hiding to surprise him on his way home, but Gragas never came. After days of searching, it became clear that Gragas had left his homeland without any trace of where he had gone. Rumors began to surface that he had fled out of shame, that he had committed some yet-to-be-uncovered crime, and sought freedom from persecution. The real cause of his disappearance, however, was an internal desire for acceptance. When even his closest friends alienated him with drink, he had concluded that the only way for him to feel at one with his fellows was to attain the same level of intoxication. Surely, in the vast expanses of Runeterra, some magic existed that would provide for him this answer. It was after many years of fruitless searching that Gragas finally found himself in the unforgiving tundras of the Freljord. He had learned much during his time away from home, but every minute he spent searching for this unknown key to inebriation brought him even further and further away from society. He had grown obsessed, 
driven by a subconscious desire to find something that he himself did not understand. It was in this state of depravity and true hopelessness that he found it. A large shard of glistening ice that shone through the darkness as if it was illuminated from within. Even in the icy wilderness of the Freljord, Gragas's bulk had kept him from being bothered by the cold, but this ice was different. It radiated some ancient magic that chilled the aging man to his bones. It was involuntary, as if the crystal had commanded him to do so. He outstretched a shivering arm and wrenched the shard from the tangled knot of black branches in which it rested. Though the thing burned his bare hand, it took Gragas a moment to acknowledge the pain. He was captivated by its splendor. After some time staring at his treasure, he concluded that the searing, blistering black marks forming on his skin where the ice touched were probably not a good sign, so he stored the shard in a large wooden cask wherein he had been brewing his most recent concoction. That night, as he tended to his injured hand, he instinctively poured from the cask a small vial of his brew, as he did every night. He sipped from the flask, and to his surprise and amazement, a sensation flowed through his veins unlike anything he had ever felt before. His lips, chapped and stiff from lack of use, cracked into a rowdy smile as Gragas roared with laughter. It seemed as if the dark memories that haunted his subconscious had been frozen behind a wall of impenetrable ice, and he was free from their burden. Even the pain from his newly sustained injuries seemed to fade away, and he danced a merry jig all throughout the night. The commotion he made attracted the attention of a nearby village, and to his delight, the locals, seemingly intoxicated by his very presence, joined in on the celebration. What happened that night would later become the stuff of myth and legend. No proof has yet been discovered to confirm the stories, but perhaps it is best left in ambiguity. For the very next morning, the sun rose upon a scene of nothing less than complete destruction. The villagers laid motionless in the snow, and trees, shrubs, and even stones were left shattered to pieces. In the center of it all, a charred, blackened crater, from which sprouted several dark, tangled roots that shot into the sky like so many gnarled fingers. Purple crystals protruded from beneath the dead wood, and the air around the place bristled with dark magic. Gragas was gone and not one of the survivors awoke with any recollection of the events that transpired that dark night. Historians and students of the arcane have theorized several explanations to give clarity to these strange stories. Based on the accounts of those to whom the legends had been passed down firsthand, it would seem that the wandering explorer known as Gragas had discovered a shard of true ice, an ancient fragment of incomprehensible power. These relics bestow their bearers with great magical capabilities, but often come at a terrible cost to those unable to wield them properly. Many theorize that the true ice shard corrupted Gragas's mind the moment he touched it, and that consuming a draft imbued with its energy only strengthened the shard's control over him. Now he is believed to wander the vast expanse of the Freljord for all eternity, trapped in an endless cycle of euphoric highs and catastrophic lows brought on by the dark magic welling inside him. His haunting laughter can sometimes be heard in the wind, but be warned, those who fall victim to the intoxicating nature of his presence will fall victim to the same fate of the man who was once known as Gragas. In the end, he achieved his ultimate goal. He no longer feels as if he does not belong. Numbed by the black magic of the true ice shard, he no longer feels at all. It's a bit of a darker twist on his original story, but it opens up so many more doors for visual design. In fact, if you guys enjoyed our new character bio, I invite you to share your own character designs that you think would fit this lore. Drop any sketches, concepts, or ideas in the Subjectively Fan Art channel of our Discord. I would love to see your takes on this character, based off either his original lore or ours. Or perhaps you're a fan of Gragas' timeless OG look. If so, feel free to share why down in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you all enjoyed our little dive into the wild world of League of Legends character designs. We're going to be going on a little holiday break soon, but we're going to make sure we have your fan design Fakemon video and my d and December video done by the end of the month. Happy holidays everyone, and we'll see you all in the next video.